I just uh, bought this seven inch metal cutting bandsaw. The manufacturer, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Is it Kaya, Kaka? Um, and I've been looking at a few different bandsaws that are on eBay. And um, this has got great capacity, comes with a coolant and um you can do angled cuts without having to rotate the workpiece or the actual bandsaw itself um now the functions i liked about it. and what i did like about this is that apparently it can operate in the vertical position as well as horizontal and that's what um sold me on it right i've basically un boxed it and it's I thought I'll show you how it come and I was quite surprised on how it turned up I was expecting a lot of assembly but very little if any to assemble um, so I'll unveil it now we'll remove basically came in a box like this had a lid and it's on a pallet uh, like a homemade pallet type thing so you can get a forklift under it Move this out of the way. All right, here we are, and ready for the reveal. It had this plastic over it. Close look by hand. There's the pallet. It comes mounted on, and what I found really handy, just in the packaging. Um, see that sign there? It says the center of gravity because the center of gravity wasn't the center of the of the crate Because it's a bandsaw it was a little bit over and Because um, I had it on my trailer And I backed the trailer into the shed and lifted it with my overhead crane Because I had to sling it I wanted it to step you know to lift up because I really have, was limited in space with this mounted on the trailer. Um, I really could only get it off the ground like this much or off the trailer. Sorry. So that center of gravity helped me to know exactly where to put the sling and made my job so much easier. All right. Um, one thing I'm a bit disappointed with, it's, it's not on wheels, but I knew that when I, when I bought it because I really need it on wheels because it's going to go there. I've made a bit of room for it over there. But as I have a car and a hoist parked there all the time, if I bring the car down and leave the saw sticking out, um, it's going to be very hard to walk past. Well, it'll be impossible to walk past it. So I need to put this on wheels so that it can uh, swing against the wall to give me some access through here when the car's down but today just the first impressions of it because i haven't actually have haven't seen it in the flesh they don't have them on display at their shop quality wise we've got bearing guides double bearing guides on both sides of the blade um so i haven't used it yet this is basically it's still on the pallet literally um, I'm just having a look. I'm really having it a play. I've probably got to read the manual to find out how to um, to move this. Because at the moment I'll just try to tilt it up and I can't get it to tilt. It may have some sort of um, uh, transport lock mechanism on it. But I'll go through the instructions. It also comes with coolant, as you can see there, coolant. And you've got a coolant tank in here. Look, the overall, I don't know what you're getting on the camera, but the overall finish of the machine looks pretty good. Like, um, like the paintwork is not flaking. It's quite, quite nice, actually. Quite a good-looking machine. Um, yeah, just... Uh, feels fairly solid it's definitely heavy weighs um about 275 kilos i think so it's not light and um 
Oh, look, we even have it. We've got a switch for the coolant tank here. Um, yeah, it's hydraulically act, act or got hydraulic feed. So, but you do, it's manually lift up. Um, 240 volts, not three phase, which is what I need. Even though my mill over there is three phase and I have a three phase conversion system set up for that, but this is going to be on the other side of the shed and I didn't want to have, have to be running a cable from one side to the other. And um, so 240 was the go. It has, I mean, there's the capacity. It's got the capacity for around at 90 degrees is seven inch. At 45 do degrees round it's five inches for a rectangular at 90 degrees seven by eight and a quarter and at 45 we've got four inch and a four and three quarter and this will more than likely fill all my capabilities apart from the rare occasion when I, I work on something quite large and I think I think you're good up until you, you cross into the hundred by a hundred mark. Trying to cut that on forty five, it, it won't do it. But um, that's a rare occasion you do something like that. Uh, it is variable speed, but it's done by belt. As you can see here, you have your four different speeds by changing the belt. Bit of a safety mechanism. I think this is switched, so if the cover is opened, the uh, saw won't operate i mean i'm quite impressed because i usually when you get these chinese things because they've been sitting in a crate for a long time they got rust spots and everything on it but i'm not getting anything like that on this on the machine surfaces it's actually um very good we've got a quick quick lock vice so you basically wind it and boop, lock it um yeah i'm not 100% up on all its features. We've got an e-stop up there, start-stop up here, rather than, I have seen some of them, they put them in terrible location. It says, after removal of shipping, well, there's the shipping strap there. Okay, so basically it looks like we remove this bolt. Ah, oh, there you go. That's why I can't move it. There's a L bracket, or some sort of bracket for shipping there. I just got to remove that and I should be able to move it. Uh, this is the stop here for uh, doing multiple cuts the same length. It is quite short, it doesn't really, not very long. But then again, how many multiple cuts of something quite long you do? Yeah, I mean, how long do you make this thing? But I would, I would like to make it so at least it would cut out, you know, to the the full width of the machine would be handier so I might change that rod for a longer one that's all that would take we've got a uh, coolant drain down there well there you go look made in China which they all are but um yeah the quality seems but at, to this point looks quality is quite good I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the way it looks um, I mean, it's sitting on this pallet, which is quite soft. I'm getting a little bit of rock, but it seems quite stable. I'm going to have to figure out some way to get this thing on wheels. I was thinking casters mounting a plate on the bottom to there and then bolting casters to the plate on the inside. Down here. I use these to bolt plates a plate to and have it go to this edge as well maybe even weld it to the edge in the inside and then bolt my casters to a bit of plate there and that way i can spread the load and have the wheels as far out as possible i do want swivels because i really need this thing to turn on a dial because i am running out of room in my workshop uh, workshop is nine by six and a half wide and yeah it's um filling up quite quick it's a bit of a schmozzle with all this boxing around at the moment but uh yeah i do do, do a lot more needing up um mainly with um 
material storage is my biggest Achilles at the moment. Uh, it's yeah, it's just terrible. I hardly got any. I've got some racks over there, and the racks used to come all the way along here, but um, I've had to shorten it. And uh, yeah, I'll have a read the instructions and open up that side, and we'll take a look. One come back when once I've uh, had a look at that. Right. See ya soon. All right, we've um, we've had a bit of a play with it. Saw works. It runs. Um, just fire it up there. It's not overly loud, and um, so that's good. It's quite smooth and quiet. The stop position limit switch is this one at the back here. That's activated by that, and it is pretty spot on. Um, I like the fact that there is a step here, so that when material is overhung there, and it cuts through, it switches off before it starts digging into here, so you won't see or like, the saw digging into here when it before it cuts off which I like that idea because I have seen many that are flat there and you do get that cutting groove there to get it to stop off um, worked out the swivel which is this one it's got like a multi-lever so that and then the saw just well it's on the stop there it'll go that way and there's your degree table down there and you have a your stop position there and it has a fine adjustment screw so you can square it up I haven't checked if anything's squared up as yet but the action is like though it's tight it is nice and smooth it's not um, yeah like it's not rubbing on anything badly that I, I could notice. It's a smooth transition, even though it is on the tight side. It's tight. What else have we discovered? Um, we can go to the vertical position. I had to make a stop here. This, it has an arm here, but this bolt was actually down there and it wouldn't let it go to the vertical position. So I've wound that bolt up to basically almost flush with the bottom of this bracket, as you can see, bracket overhangs. And I think that's just to help in the vertical. So now when you push it back, you have to sort of, because it wants to tip now, because you pass the balance point. And now we're in the vertical position. But what, <laughs> I'm a little, disappointed with um, because even though it has to go lower because we're on a pallet but I want to put this on wheels um, and I just had a thought because you can buy these um, wheels which actually this sits on and you can it'll raise and lower it as you need to and then you can wheel it around, which I may go that direction. And that way I don't have to do any modifications to the base. Um, but yeah, more of that in future when I decide. But just getting back to this in vertical position. Um, yeah, just to use it so you're in line with the blade. Because it's so far back from the table. Like... <laughs> Yeah, I can't barely reach it. Like, I'm reaching over my full length of my arm straightened out. So, that is a bit of a an issue for me. Um, and it will become a little bit of a problem. But, I have sort of if thought of that if I pull this forward and limit... Hang on, I've got to turn this bell open so it'll come forward more. If I sort of set it there on that angle, I have a lot more better reach by using it like this. 
so I don't have to reach as far. So that may be uh, what I have to do, which is why that's that's there. I have seen um, a couple of people remove this guide and make a slightly bigger one. That may be what I do, or um, I go to a full-size table drop-on for that. Well, yeah, maybe 200 by 200 or something like that. I might do something like that. It all depends on, um, yeah, like when I lower this now, um, and it goes all the way to the bottom. I'm not sure on what these are here for at the moment. Um, I must say, though the instructions that come with it are clear, and written in very good English and printed in you know decent sized text um, it basically said to use this in a horizontal position just lift the thing up but it didn't actually state that it won't go to the full vertical position unless you adjust this bolt um, So, yeah, there are some shortfalls in the instructions, unfortunately. And I didn't delve into much of this. And I noticed we've got a keyway here. See a little key in there? That's obviously to stop this when you get some movement on these bolts. That stops the play from the bolt clearance, the holes in the, for the bolts. Keeps it stuck on there. Um, and it looks like it's there to clamp that down, but yeah, why why these are there, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's a bit of an odd. Unless you some sometimes these things can be put in different positions, but um, it doesn't look like it has an alt unless that's what these are for. You remove them and then that can move to there. Like, if you look at the distance, these holes from there to there, it's, um, this looks further away. So that isn't going to make it to that hole and that, for that to do that. And I think you'd be running into this anyway. I do know of some that do that. They also some that will go from this side to this side. But generally that is for ones that will pivot not only in this direction, but that direction as well. Mine doesn't seem to... Well, if I take this off, I could pivot it in that direction. Um, do we have a stop on this side? Um, we have a stop, but that stop is for going in this direction. If I unflip, or if I unlock this, and f just back it off a touch to flip that up, this, I'll have to lift it up, so we'll lock the cam. Lift it up the height of the vice. You can rotate it past that point. To get an angle on there, but no, you wouldn't be able to cut all the way down to here anyway. Um, so that's not doing you any good. And even if you could bring it, which you could, as far as there, you're not going to be able to make a cut anyway. Not a hundred percent sure on that yet. Um, I've worked out the guarding, so you take these two off. And then that will simply fall down. There is a, a little slide guard here that you should you need to remove before you drop that. Because I found it out and it chipped the paint when it dropped right there. Not too happy about that, but now I know. It's a little bit of um lesson learned now. I haven't taken that off yet, but um I will have to look at what I'm cutting and 
if the speed it's on at the moment, I don't even know what speed it's on at the moment, so I'd have to have a look, find out. Um, I don't know if you can see in here, I'll just grab a little torch, and we'll have a quick look in there. There is no other accessories or anything in here. This is your, um, obviously, your coolant tank, and I am glad to see it's got sort of a, a strainer there. There is a separate strainer to go in this packet. There it is there for the large pieces. I'm assuming that's gonna sit on there like that to stop large bits of debris getting into the tube for a start. And then you have this smaller one here that you can just take out and wash out and then put back in on occasion. Just sort of sits in there. Oh, it locks, no, no locking tabs. No, it just sort of sits in there like that. And of course your pump, the pump works, I've tried, but it only operates as, as when you turn the um, bandsaw on and switches off once it is um, once it is on. So um, you'd probably switch it on, wait till the coolant started coming through and then open the valve for it to start cutting, start lowering down. Um, yeah, that's all just sits in there. Um, I found out that this has got a bottom base, which I wasn't expecting, but yeah, having a coolant pump, I thought that might be suspended in here and have an open floor, but it doesn't, which is good. Um, yeah, I was thinking casters on there, but now I'm thinking external, um, sort of like these machinery type things. Um, they're not that expensive, actually, and it might be perfect for this, and then I can... Because if I put casters on this, it, it is going to get a lot higher. And I think it's actually will be similar height to what it is now with casters on it. And I'm not a tall man. I'm only um, 168 cent, uh, centimetres. 160, 168, yeah, centimetres. So I'm not a, um, a tall man. And this is probably at the limit of height comfortability and when you put this in the vertical mode it's probably getting a little too high so if i can get this on the ground and use those um machinery um wheel things which raise and lower depending if um it'll actually lift this off the ground because it, again you it's 275 kilograms um whether they will do that or not, I don't know. I'm going to have to look more into that before I decide which way I go. Um, but, yeah, that would be ideal for me so I can put it back down onto the ground. But overall, quite happy with the purchase. But you do get what you pay for. But, um, look, this was around the... I think I, I bought a spare blade with it, so it was just over 2000 Australian dollars which um, compared to the machinery warehouse one was nearly half the price. That one was like 3000 with GST, $3,800, something like that. It was, it was a ridiculous amount of money for the same saw, um, more or less. And so this is part of the reason why I went to this, this particular, well, I suppose you could say brand, Okay, now I've had a bit of a play, as you can see, we've got chips, and um, I worked out the speed, it was on probably the second slowest speed, I turned it to the slowest, wasn't happy with that cut though, I was cutting uh, 1.6 mil uh, box tube, that's the wall thickness, and it didn't like it, it's a fairly coarse blade on it, though it is like a multi-size tooth blade. I sped it up to the second fastest speed, so we're on 45 meters per minute now, and it's, it cuts a lot better on that speed. I must say, yeah, a lot better on that, that particular speed. So I've done that, and I slowed the feed rate down, and yeah, it seems to be cutting that thin stuff. I do need think that I need to get a uh, finer tooth blade for thin wall box tube for the future but yeah like anything 
this is the standard blade it came with and when I bought a spare blade because I knew I'd need a spare blade the last thing you want to be doing is in the middle of a project and your your band your band uh, blade snaps or you lose all your teeth and you can't finish your project so I bought a spare one with it and um, I asked for a finer tooth one because I had assumed it had like a general purpose one in there but he didn't have any and I've, I've actually asked him to see if he can get one for me so hopefully he'll get back to me and uh, I can purchase a finer tooth one I think that's going to suit me better the reason why I made these cuts is one to try it out and it it you know I worked out a couple of things and I've sorted a few things out maybe the speed and the feed for, for box tube I think I can go um, the speed not so much of a problem for solid stuff um, but I could probably um, go a bit more aggressive on the feed. I wasn't using the coolant, and uh, I did notice that things were getting a bit warm on the offcut, but that's to be expected. But, yeah, I don't want to um, fill up the coolant until I mess around with the wheels when they arrive, so I'll just let that go for now. Uh, I could always spray some on there, but I sort of didn't want to get it too dirty. So this will be able to vac up because it's not wet. Um, what I man managed to do is these bump stops, I've adjusted them. As you can see, the, the dial there, and it's on, well, it's on hard on the bump stop. But when I made a cut, I measured the cut. And with the square, I wasn't square. I was square in the vertical plane, so the blade is adjusted nice and vertical. So that cut was nice and vertical, but it was on a slight angle. So I've adjusted the bump stop and I put a square against the fixed jaw and the, the blade itself. And I lined it till there was no gap and I took a cut and I'm very happy with that. So now I wound out the stop here um, a little bit, oh sorry, wound in a little bit to allow the blade to come around a bit more because I couldn't, I couldn't flip this back over. So I wound it in a bit more and now it's, uh, I try to cut and yeah, it's spot on. Spot on in the horizontal plane and the vertical plane. Very good. So next I tried going to the 45 degree and there's an, another bump stop on this side for 45 degrees. I adjusted, I did a cut of where it was currently set, which was actually just past, actually just before that worked out just before the 45 degree mark there when you lined it up with there and having thought that this is just past the line now so you know, if i bring it in it's just past it i figured that that would be also be in the wrong place because it was just in front of the 45 degree mark if anything it should be just after so i did a cut against the bunt stop just to see what would happen in case maybe this scale his way out but as I did found out it was wrong it was off so I then adjusted the butt stop uh, to go out a little bit further to go just past there did a cut and yeah it's pretty good it is so close it's not worth mucking around with it so far we're cutting well now that we've worked out the speed like I said we've chipped a couple of teeth there that I can see um we did i did that was when it was running probably too slow and maybe feeding a little bit too fast on the on the first cut i tried could have happened because yeah, it didn't sound the best so that's why i sped it up to see if um how how that would work and that worked good speeding it up finer speed and that goes through that that thin stuff quite well so that that's lesson learned now and um i mean these things i've seen them a lot worse than that chipped and they still cut quite fine there's, there's so many teeth on this thing uh, it'll, it'll still go all right but um yeah 
I mean, it's new. I'm new to this machine, and these things like that are going to be a learning curve. Every type of different steel that I put in there, I'm going to have to learn how fast I need to run it, how much speed, feed I need to give it, and you, it's like any machine, you, after a bit of, uh, a couple of mistakes, you start to learn, and then um, the next time you know better. And it's the same with, I'm um, using my mill and my lathe, it has its has its limitations, and there is ways to get around those limitations, and you learn those the more you use the machine, and this will be no different. All right, um, been playing around with the bandsaw a little bit, and previously I was wondering what this was for. I'm still not sure why it's got a quick release but it's given me a bit of an idea now um, I'm trying to do a job here and I want to trim this is a sh gonna shelf that I'm gonna be putting up there and it's a little too long um, I, I didn't make this it I actually got it from work they um, wasn't wasn't needed and um, they I asked and they said I could have it and um, basically it had a support there and another support here and one at the other end and it was going to go be installed around a piece of box tube so it had a notch there so rather than fill this in because I need to make it shorter I'm going to cut it off a little bit here because I need to make it shorter because it comes out to about here so I only get left with a gap that big and I just want a little bit more headroom there. So I sort of want to try and keep it back to this pole. So I'm going to cut it down. But I thought rather than use the angle, because that's like three mil steel. It's quite thick. Might even be five mil. Because it is quite thick. I think it's five mil. Quite, yeah, sick and it's bloody heavy. So, I thought I might try and fit it in here, and I need 320, but as it stands, the opening with there is not quite that. Um, I'll just wind it back as far as it'll go. That's about as far as I've physically got, and as you put the bandsaw in there, I need 320, so I only got 290, so no go. But what I thought I could do was, um, if I remove, because I see these extra holes here, and I'm wondering what they're for. So I undid that, and I undid this. Okay. And when you look underneath, there's a block. And the block rides in that groove and obviously pushes the jaws forward and backwards. So I thought I could get a little bit extra capacity from it if I use that hole. But, but if I, I really need to bring it back down to this hole. And then I get well and truly more than what I need. There's more, there's like an extra 60 mil capacity and I'm not even the last hole. I could go back a bit further. So there you go. All right. And it will swivel. And I've sort of worked out if I, because this, this front one was really tight. This front bolt was really tight. If I loosen that and then remove this bolt, which is maybe why it's got the handle on it, uh, then it will pivot. But yeah, just a. Another little feature that I didn't know about um, and it's coming in handy now is the extra capacity that I can get from this. Because this is going to be full width, I don't have to worry about pivoting so I can put that back later. So I'm going to install that now and then um, I can cut this 320mm wide plate without having to use an angle grinder to do it. How cool is that? I'm gonna get into it. Cheers. All right, we hit a bit of a snag with the uh, extra 
uh, capacity I thought I had. Now, in my great wisdom, I forgot I only can only cut between these two points, and I have. Let me just get the tape out here. I have a maximum cut between there and there of 300 and let's say 315 millimeters. There's probably two mils of spare for a bit of clearance. So that's wider than this because this is 320, I'm pretty sure it was. This is 320. A little over 320, so it's not going to be able to do it. But another issue was that when this bit came down, I'll just lower it down now so you can get an idea. Okay, it was going to hit there as well. As you can see, there's no way it's going to cut through, but I thought I will cut as much as I can with this. That's less for the angle grinder. And I got about almost halfway. Um, I did have this clamp on there. I th and that was actually hitting on here. This corner was hitting. Okay. I've come up with an idea. I've adjusted this guide as far back as it can go. And I'm just noticing here, which I had noticed here before, but wasn't sure if it would line up or not, but I'm going to give it a crack. I've taken these off, and these are just a round sleeve that hit hard up against it. It must be some, some way to keep it um, in position, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these bolts. I'm going to remove, unbolt that, and this, and the one back there, and I'm hoping... That if I place this forward more, it'll be able to bolt it back down again. I don't think it'll be able to get that in because there's nothing there to bolt it to. But I should be able to get these three back in. And that'll bring the jaws forward. Now, when I do that, as long as I can get clearance on the inside of here. When it comes down. Um... I'll be good. I'll get that extra room there and I may be able to then bolt it back down and cut that off completely. I'm going to try it because um, if I don't do it, I won't know. So I'm going to give it a crack and I'll come back once I've got it moved up. If and explain if I, if I can do it or not. We'll find out. See you soon. All right, I've removed it, and we have a straight keyway here, and that's what keeps the jaws straight, or well, the whole thing straight. So, yeah, I mean, to me, that looks like exactly the same distance to the next holes, so this should work. Okay, this should work. I'm going to set you up on my little tripod, and we'll... Um, I'll, put, I'll fit it on. Here's what the underside looks like of that. Uh, all painted, which is good. So we'll um, fit it on there and see if the holes line up. And they do.
Now, before I go too far, I need to lower this and see if I can clear that. clear it so that's capacity of the missing obviously but I've only got from here and I don't know if that's going to be enough between there and there oh we are just over 320 mil I've got about 320, let's line up, 322 millimetres. So I think I may just scrape it in. It's going to be, I might have to just finish off the end um, with it. Or if I, I got a little bit more room here, I could chuck a couple of washers in there but we'll see how we go we may may just make it we'll see what happens so I'm gonna back up lift this up out of the way I'll finish uh, buttoning these up and then we'll come back all right I've um I haven't cut it yet, but I've just lowered it down to um, see how much clearance I have. Um, and I've got a little bit of height there before it's going to hit around here. So I have a choice of either packing this up a bit higher if I can't make it. Or just leave it and see. But I think I might just have enough because there's not a lot of room to lower it much further. Um, I think I'm going to push the product out and um, see if it drops down with the vise in this position if I have enough room to lower it down. I'm hoping that I have. I've got no issues on this side. It's going to clear it all. Where we're looking okay, so I'll just pull that back out a bit, set you up here. to get right past it and I think we do we do as you can see we're not touching there and it's very close this is probably the maximum I'll get out of it. There it is there, the clearance, as you see. So it's going to work. It's going to cut right through. Well, there you go. I'm going to have to look in the book for the metric conversion. Because this is a 7 inch. Now, I'll, um, I'm not sure why 7 inches converts into... On the metric scale off the top of my head but um be interesting to see if we're past the maximum manufacturer's capacity because i really haven't had to do much all right push that back oh. trying to come back down again
All right. Um, yeah, let's uh, give it a whirl. I'm not going to... I'll use this for the coolant to... Um, it wants to run down the table. So we'll uh, get it out of the way and we'll give it a crack. Well, that just made my life a lot easier and I've got a really nice cut bit of a burr I'm not going to have to file off but I didn't have to use the angle grinder that is just fantastic nice clean cut a little bit of cleaner and a huge 320 millimeter capacity now now um i'm going to look that up convert it and um then i'm going to check with the capacity of the machine to see if that's actually exceeded it or not um if it has it hasn't done it by much but um yeah it's uh it's great really great news i'm stoked Cheers.